Okay, hi folks. I just wanted to run you through some of the uh, questionnaire analysis in case that you didn't get to look at it or in case that it's coming across like gobbledygook. So I'm just going to um, run you through what it did and then also look at some of the main messages coming out as far as I can see. Um, so we started off with our questionnaire that we had for each school and information filled out and then tick boxes against our 11 questions in the questionnaire. Uh, this transferred into one row of information per questionnaire, as you can see, and we fed all that into uh, our master. So one row per questionnaire. So the first little thing I had to do was a little bit of uh, cleaning up of the data. Um, as you'll see, some people might have entered primary for primary school, some people might have put in primary school, um, some people might have put in the name of the school. So I just needed to get that uh, consistent sort of thing. Uh, also, if you look at the areas, another example, we've got uh, street names, most of the time Dublin and a number, uh, <clears throat> and then you'll see stuff like this. So I just had to clean that up a little bit. So. When it's all cleaned up, look like this. So you can see I've highlighted in green where I've had to make uh, a change. So primary school, just to make it consistent. Um, same with the Dublins there. Once or twice, I had to uh, update one of these tick box um, questions. So for example, here's question two. Have you got enough provision? Uh, in this case here, this didn't answer yes or no. But from the narrative over 100 pupils would be interested in acquiring music lessons. So that would suggest there isn't enough uh, provision currently. Over 80 pupils are not being catered for. Same again. So I didn't have to do that very often, but just once or twice, if the narrative didn't match up with the answer, I fixed it. Okay. So on to the uh, questionnaire itself. So first page is just an overview. So took all the questionnaires on the 26th of September. It was 150 uh, schools or education centres or youth projects. Um, looking at the type of uh, centre that came out, uh, adding up the numbers, you can see that very much in the majority is primary schools. So again, just a key point about the uh, analysis is that it's the number of, of respondents we've looked at. Uh, typically, you'd have more primary schools than secondary schools because there's more people in secondary schools. So we're looking at the number of respondents here. If we're able to look at the number of students, the picture might be slightly different, but we don't have all that information for this run. Okay, so if to bear that in mind that we're looking at majority primary schools, then there was just a split of... Um, areas in Dublin that were covered. You could see that there's a lot of uh, response from Dublin 9. There was a bit of a crossover between two of the areas, so a lot of uh, areas got hit there, a lot of schools got hit there. Um, and we've got more respondents in the north side than the south side at the moment. Okay, so that's just a quick overview of what we're looking at. Uh, a further split, so we're taking each of the areas in Dublin and showing uh, how much of it was other post-primary, preschool, primary school, or youth projects. So that gives us an idea of the spread. So if we look at that, we can see, okay, there's our Dublin 9 with the most respondents, which corresponds to the previous graph. We could see there's a decent balance there uh, between post-primary, primary school, um, and youth project. Dublin 10 is quite balanced, Dublin 1 maybe. And then there's other areas that are predominantly primary schools reviewed. So Dublin 12, a lot of primary schools. Dublin 7, a lot of primary schools. Uh, interestingly, the youth projects, we only really picked them up in five areas, six areas uh, across the city. So we're probably a bit thin on, uh, on youth projects that we looked at in this survey. Uh, so perhaps we haven't got the full picture on what it looks like there, but for the moment, that's what we have. So question one, uh, what is your school organization's current music education provision? 
none within the curriculum outside school hours or other. So we can see vast majority have answered um, false to none. So it means that 95% have some form of music education provision that we um, reviewed. Okay. Of that, you can see the majority of it is within the curriculum. So, and considering we're mainly looking at primary schools, it's probably the music education that's part of the curriculum that they're receiving so far. Interestingly, uh, we've got a big chunk of, of places that do um, music education outside of ours. So there would be an appetite for that, perhaps there's a suggestion there. Okay. If we run on to the next question which is is your provision enough to cater for the current demand the big message coming out here 63 percent said no the current provision isn't enough for the current demand so which would suggest there's a need which is good news for us um 19 were weren't aware of what the uh, demand levels were in the area so all that together is 82 percent of people we uh, asked so they didn't have enough provision or weren't aware of the demand in the area so even though most people have some f sort of provision it's not enough most of the time okay so looking at our age groups this ties in with our uh, uh, primary school secondary school course we saw before Um, I had to break this down a bit further than the straight 0 to 4 5 to 13 13 to 18 type split that we had before because some people answered more than one age group so not 12 not 18 not to 4 etc to cater for multiple answers um again we can see the majority of the people we're looking at here are in the 5 to 12 bracket we've also got 5 to 18 there as well which is people who have primary and secondary schools in their center uh, so that's the majority of the people uh, I've got a chunk there, 13 to 18 or secondary schools and our preschools there. Okay. Now, what genres of music are taught? Please tick all that apply. So, we can see that 59% of people we asked had classical music being taught, 51% had Irish traditional, 52% etc and that's how the, the breakdown went of people answering ticking the box or not ticking the box putting that into a, a chart you can see that classical traditional rock pop are probably the most popular genres taught obvious drop for jazz and music technology i'm not sure what kind of appetite there would be in our in our group of young people we're considering for jazz Music technology maybe is an area that could be developed more. I'm sure there'd be an appetite for hip hop, dance and electronic music genres. Choir is also taught. So that would be in keeping with um, the sort of messages we got out of the questionnaire and the fact that we have a lot of primary schools, that these ones are coming out. Also other, um, perhaps world music and some other multicultural sort of music genres could be pushed a bit more if that there's a, a gap there uh, in our group of young people okay where does music teaching take place dedicated classroom got um, most of the answers there 60 percent very few people using a higher classroom a third of the people using other so that would be like an assembly room or a hall uh, so dedicated classroom i think you know people were responding yes to that if it was taking place in the in their primary school class where they teach normally so not sure if we're getting a mixed message there, but that's what's coming out. Okay, question eight. How is your music program funded? Another interesting one for us. Um, if you look at the four areas we talked about, uh, parents or students um, funding it, school completion program or fundraising. Majority of the time, there really isn't funding happening for these people, but most of the time where it does happen it's parents or students uh, and some other methods okay so it's quite a, a strong message there from our point of view as well um how is your music program funded a lot of the time it's not so there's a need for it 
do you work with any local partners or other organisations in delivering music education? Yes. 40% is a, a big portion who have done that already, which again is good news for us and that people are prepared to work with external partners that have shown they have to be willing perhaps for us as music generation to come in and do something. So I think that's another encouraging message. Question 10, how are instruments, if any, provided? So you've got students, parents, and the school provision there and then there's people with a combination of students and parents and school provision so either school providing or student per, uh, parents accounts for just over half the renting area seems to be very uh, not very well exploited at all uh, I don't know if that's an avenue for us to go down um, and a combination so that's the patterns coming out from how people provide their instruments Question 11, I think another good message. Um, have you any further plans to develop music education? Big um, majority there, 63% saying, yes, we do. We'd love to develop uh, music education further. So all in all, they're the main messages coming out. It's fairly bog standard analysis, question by question. We could do further drill down, but I think there's some uh, messages we could use there in the meantime. Right, see you Tuesday.